how to launch a successful online coaching business in less than 30 days. So I've got five simple tips that coaches can follow, and I've followed all five of these tips with Prepare Like a Pro, which we started a couple of years ago. So first tip is to have a target audience. So who do you enjoy working with and um, what do they desire um, to achieve? What are some needs that they need to um work towards. Second step is to create a business name and claim all the social and searchable platforms. Third step, um, create a business model. You want to try and have an idea of are you going to be a low ticket price uh, offering? So therefore, you're going to need high volume to be able to um, financially have a viable business. How do I become a performance coach? I'm currently a personal trainer. Firstly, You've got your certificate three and four in personal training. So to become a performance coach or also known as a strength and conditioning coach and working with athletes, you need to, at, as a minimum, get your bachelor's of exercise science. So that would be a great start. And then from there, you might go on to get your master's in a, in a specific area like sports psychology or exercise physiology or sports science or high performance, whatever it might be. So yeah, the fundamentals would be that bachelor's degree and then um, then you're qualified to be a strength and conditioning coach. You might also look at doing the ASCA level uh, intro to ASCA, and they've got their level one, two, and three. I find I'm very fatigued post game. Is there any ways I can boost my recovery? Great question, Alyssa. There, there definitely is. I reckon at this time of year, um, where football is roughly six to, to eight weeks into the season, there can be an accumulation of load. So, making sure you're getting your recovery. Recovery starts as soon as the game's finished. So you want to try to wind down um, from a uh, mental point of view. So anything that helps you relax um, might be a um, hot shower, could be doing lying on your back and, and letting your legs um, rest on the wall, some static stretching, some light movement, like yoga-based movement, um, some foam rolling or getting a flush massage and wondering how far I should be running per week leading up to a game and what are some other metrics that are important for football. Uh, yeah, great questions, Charlie. Uh, awesome to hear that, yeah, you've invested in your game by buying a GPS unit. The key metrics that I like to look at and that are quite reliable from a research point of view would be your total distance. So that includes walking, jogging, running, sprinting, everything that you do on the football field from a um, legs point of view. Then you've got your um, high-speed running, which is typically 20 Ks per hour or 19.8 Ks per hour um, or 5.5 meters per second. Then you've got your sprint distance, which is 25.5 Ks per hour or around 7 meters per second. So they're your three key um, bands that we want to look at, how to improve and increase inches on your vertical jump. So firstly, we need to be able to produce more force in the vertical vector, so straight into the ground to be able to um, allow our body to move more distance up towards the air, up you know, vert in the vertical plane. So um, developing stronger legs is obviously um, really helpful for this task. So think exercises like uh, heavy squats and heavy deadlifts where you're having to produce a lot of force and push uh, a lot of force into the ground. So that's really specific to improving uh, your ceiling in terms of maximum maximum force. So li at least lifting heavy once a week. That means low reps, loss of lots of rest period, and over a period of weeks you should be lifting a little bit heavier each week. Um, that's really, really important. Those movements should be quite slow because there's a lot of weight involved with those heavy lifts.